What's up, guys? Welcome back to The Home Slice. I'm super excited for today. Today I am launching my chopping knife testing tournament. I'm going to chop with two knives for 90 minutes each and best test before and after. We're going to have some really high quality knives. We're going to have some more like silly or uh, traditional or, or just random kind of blades. Knife with the best sharpness at the end of the test is going to be the winner and then is going to go head to head with another winner until we come down to one specific winner. And we're going to go through some really unusual stuff. I got some surprises along the way but I've been so excited for today's video. I'm finally going to be putting this Jensen Knives Coastal Camper to the test. Again, I've been doing some edge testing. You guys, some of you guys have seen my thousand chop test. I wanted to not sharpen the heck out of this and lose the behind the edge thickness on it. But I wanted to come to a sharpening method that really does this knife justice. This is some 63 Rockwell Nitro V made by Wade Jensen. Thanks so much Wade for your um, partnership and for your patience. Anyway, I'm really pleased the edge came up on this beautifully. It's just spraying hairs off of my arm. They just like fly off of the skin in a really satisfying way. I can go up to one of the fern trees here in New Zealand and just set this against it and push and it will slice it off. It's a 17 degree denim stropped micro convex edge and I'm hoping that this edge sort of does justice to the work that Wade has done. The main purpose that we're doing today, I'm going to be chopping some small brush to simulate normal sort of camp use. And once we have done that and put a little bit of beading to the edge, then we're going to take this thing into the kitchen and do a combat kitchen episode and have it face off against another blade. My gosh, it's so steamy wet out here. I've been dodging the rain. I've been trying to get this test in around COVID and rain, but I think we're going to make it today. And simply because they're the two knives that are closest in sort of size and weight presently. Facing off against the coastal camper will be this traditional kukri from Nepal. My friend Drew sent me this and he's like, hey, your viewers might be interested in this. I actually went to Nepal, you know, to a workshop and, and bought a kukri and it would be interesting to see you know, how the quality of steel or the design of the craftsmanship sort of lines up. So this was real hard to sharpen. The 
The Coastal Camper got down around 150 on the best to start out, and this was up closer to the 300 mark. It was very thick behind the edge, so it was quite, quite difficult to sharpen by hand. So we'll see how it goes. You've been hunting me down on. I thought you were the wild one. I wanted to do a little bit of filming in normal speed because I just wanted to highlight how effortless. Holy cow! Oh, <laughs> this edge, guys. Nitro V. Okay, this is gorse. This is like one of the stouter, more woody sort of things that we deal with. And I just want to highlight oh, how effortless, effortless. Oh, this Nitro V is beautiful. Okay, let's find a big stem and see how we go because this green Chinese lantern, we call it, is not putting out much of a fight. But gorse is a, is a serious enemy. So let's see if we can find the old trunk. Get some harder, woodier stuff. It's right there, hopefully you can see. All right. Oh my gosh. Done. We are through. Oh, there's another trunk there. <laughs> Guys, this edge is effortless. So beautiful. All right, we're here at 90 minutes. We are all done with the first test of the Coastal Camper. Man, my goodness, the handle ergonomics are so good. With these leather rigging gloves, uh, wet was no problem. My hands got a little bit muddy and then it wanted to slide around a little bit, but that kind of happens with any handle. But the micarta held up really well, really grippy. Uh, no visible edge damage. I just finished up with chopping like a bit of a sort of a dead and dried out more of a hardwood that was leaning over into a pathway and ugly so I chopped it up and that's the kind of stuff that's really hard on an edge especially a stainless no visible edge damage as of yet I don't have much hair left to see if it still shaves but um, definitely still shaves at the bottom and the top with some effort, it's not kind of spraying the hairs off as it was before. Oh yeah, it's still shaving in the middle. It's a tiny bit more effort to it. Um, I'm going to have to say that this style of edge that I've put on this knife has kind of made this knife everything that I had hoped it would be. It goes through all of the things that I expect it to. 
it goes through about 80% of the things I didn't expect it to. So we've got some flax kind of hanging down here. So I'll, I'll just do a resting cut. And you can see like that edge is still crisp. Yeah, this one's sideways, so maybe a bit more difficult. Yeah, didn't quite make it through that. But if we give it a little swing, oh yeah. <laughs> like that is, that is crisp, guys. Um, this edge is still on point. So, oh my goodness, I have so much love for this knife. <laughs> and for a stainless, guys, this does the work of a carbon steel. So, I am so, 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 so pleased with this uh, micro-convex edge. I'm so pleased with this overall platform that Wade Jensen has designed. And um, I'm really, really pleased that we found an edge, that we sort of married an edge to this particular design that really, really brings out the best in it. Another thing that I have to say is that this sheath is the best sheath I have ever tested. I really liked it the first day that I tested this knife. I'm like a bit in love with it now. Like Wade just made this the slimmest, most form-fitting, convenient, practical package that I have ever used, bar none. <laughs> so here's another fern. Let's see if we can do what we were doing at the beginning where we just do a, a cut just pushing through. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So this thing's still sharp. We'll have to best test it. But for now, we're gonna jump over to the Kukri. When some whistling wind let me listen. So right away we run into a few problems with the kukri. One of them is that it slides forward in your hand and then this really pokes into you. And the other one is that it's so thick behind the edge. It kind of annihilates its way through things. I'm not saying kukris are bad. I think kukris are awesome, but I think that the a kind of if you buy one from the tourist market <laughs> Oh my goodness, don't expect it to be comfortable. I chased you through these trees And tasted your tender breeze You're on the tip of my tongue But we've only begun Yeah, yeah, I, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> the next problem is that it works its way up and then this metal edge digs into my pinky and sends kind of nerve pain up into my hand. So I also feel like this is a cut I did. Like this is just kind of brutalizing the plants, which I don't mind for the ones that I am wanting to get rid of here in the valley. But for the ones that I'm trimming back from the paths, I don't like how that invites further damage in. So it's been uh, it's been <laughs> just under half an hour, and oh, this kukri is kind of brutalizing the, the plants and brutalizing me. I think I'm gonna call it off. I'm gonna finish trimming this thing that's sticking out into the path. It's another hard dead one, kind of like I did with the coastal camper. But oh, I think we'll cut this this test a little bit short. <laughs>
sometimes you just got to bring in the knife that actually works for the mercy kill. <laughs> I don't want to leave the flax shredded like that. Oh wow, that's clear. Okay, well, time to head home for the best readings in the wrap-up. Okay, well, <laughs> to be honest, it's been a couple days since I performed this test, but it's been good because it's given me some time to mull over the results and to think about what the most important or most sort of certain takeaways would be. I actually went directly off from my day of work yesterday to go out on a little holiday with my wife, which was awesome, so that was really good. I think our big takeaways here are you can you can see that uh, a kukri which is actually designed for chopping can be made miserable <laughs> if certain things are ignored such as ergonomics steel quality heat treatment thickness behind the edge being the main ones that i'm aware of it experienced quite a large jump and i think that if you go to a, a country where they have a traditional forging craft and buy something at an open market, you're probably going to be getting quite a lottery of, of quality, but probably weighted toward the low quality end of things. And most of you will probably have expected that. The other thing that I think you can conclude is that chopping, which is sort of an off-label use for this coastal camper knife, it's sort of outside its scope of specific design. It's it's capable in it, but it's not specifically what it was designed for. Is is possible and plausible if by good design you add versatility. So the grind is ground thin enough, the thickness behind the edge weighs sort of paid attention, the balance, the ergonomics are are quite good. And so it's interesting to put a knife not designed as a chopping knife up against a knife that is designed as a chopping knife and to see that actually through good heat treatment, through good geometry, through good sharpening, you can actually have a knife that's not performing its intended use, outperform a knife that is performing its intended use through really good design and intentionality. And that's sort of what I have been hoping to demonstrate through testing this knife. I think the other thing that's really cool Obviously, the kukri jumped from 300 to 600 and um, lost. <laughs> the coastal camper obviously won. But I think something else that's really, really cool is looking back to the 1,000 chop tests that I was performing. The edge would start somewhere between 130 and 150, and then it would settle out at either around 200, 210, or they settled out somewhere around 230 or 240 in, in the case of the hair whittling edge. And then they held that level of edge for quite some time before beginning to decrease. What's cool about this is that the 1095 Crovan in my K-Bar Becker BK7 has been sort of handpicked for high impact chopping. It's thick behind the edge. It's a big, beefy, heavy knife. And so you see these, this sort of combination of being purpose-built for this task. And what's cool is that this Nitro V as a stainless, because it's so tough to begin with, Wade was able to harden it up to around 63 Rockwell, and it actually went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the numbers that I was getting on the K-Bar and held an edge in roughly the same pattern. Through these 90 minutes of chopping, you see us starting 
at about 150, I think one test was 153, one was 156, and then it settled out at about 240 best, 243 I think is the actual number. But you see it following a very, very similar trend, though it's a stainless, and though it's at 63 Rockwell, and though it's thinner overall, and though it's thinner behind the edge, and this is exactly what I was hoping for. I was hoping to find a method of edge refining that makes it possible to enjoy some steels that are harder, that are maybe have other benefits like corrosion resistance in a high impact application that they still hold up. And I think that I have stumbled across at least one good method for accomplishing that. I can't wait to take this into the kitchen. I think the tomatoes are probably already trembling and I hope to get that Combat Kitchen episode out soon. I think I'm gonna have the Coastal Camper go toe to toe with a Falcon even A1, so that'll be lots of fun. I'll get to it as soon as I can. It's been a crazy week, but I hope you guys are doing well, and I'll just say for today, peace out guys from the Home Slice. Take care of yourselves. Love is never fleeing, the same in every scene.